Craig Higginson's uh, Last Summer, The Dream House, and the landscape painter, then you are in for yet another exciting adventure in his latest offering titled The White Room. The award-winning author takes us on a roller coaster journey as we nail-bitingly follow uh, the story of South African playwright uh, uh, Hannah Mead, trying to navigate her way through London uh, for the opening night of a new play. Well, a lot happens as the story unravels, so before we give too much away, let's uh, take this conversation further with the book's author, Craig Higginson. A very good morning to you, Craig, and Hi. welcome. Nice to be here. Well, before we get to the crux of the story, The White Room, let's talk about who Craig Higginson is. Um, I don't know who I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> you I'm, don't know who you are? I'm just a writer, so I, I work on television. I, I'm the script editor for Rhythm City. Okay. And, um, and then I write plays and novels as well. Okay. And I teach a little bit at AFTA in Johannesburg. All right. Um, and yeah, my new, new novel is The White Room. It um, came out last year. And it's, yeah, it's about a, a playwright who's going to London to see the opening of her play. And she's invited to the opening a guy called Pierre, who um, is a student of Congolese descent that she taught when she was in Paris. Mm -hmm. And the play is actually about her time in Paris. And, and then when the play starts, you kind of go back in time to when she was in Paris and she had this relationship with this guy, Pierre. Right. Now, um, The White Room is similar to a play uh, that you wrote, The Girl in a, Ye in a Yellow Dress. Was the yeah. book inspired by the play or you simply wanted to explore the idea further? Yeah, so, so I wrote a play called The Girl in the Yellow Dress that came out in 2010. It was in Grahamstown. I went to Edinburgh and toured around the place. Mm. Um, and it did, it did quite well, um, sort of internationally and locally. It was on at the Market Theatre for, for some months. Um, and yeah, I suppose I wanted to kind of revisit the world of those characters. You know, a novel's very different from a play. A play is over in one hour and 15 minutes. You only have access to what people are sort of saying and doing. You don't really have access to the interior lives. Yes. Um, and The Girl in the Yellow Dress was five scenes with two people in a room. And so in writing the novel, I was able to kind of go out to the streets of Paris. I was be able to go back into their memories. Um, and, and just yeah, interior spaces, exterior spaces, present, past. You can just explore much more. Um, and yeah, so I enjoyed, I enjoyed kind of revisiting those characters. Yeah. And the book centers around Hannah's play, which is currently on in London at the moment. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's based on a true story of his former student. Take us through that storyline. Yeah, so she met this, this student called Pierre, who... Um, Who's, who's kind of of Congolese descent. He, he sort of says he's from the Congo and he, he kind of, he was adopted. He was, his family were murdered and he was adopted by, by a French family, mm -hmm. a kind of white French family. You later find out as the novel progresses that it's a bit more complicated than that. And the novel's very much about characters pretending to be one thing but actually being another thing. Mm -hmm. You know how when you start a relationship, you, often people will, will kind of pretend to be a certain thing or present themselves in a certain way. Yeah. And they don't want to necessarily reveal all their baggage. But um, the novel, in a way, is about people who are the children of, of parents who were involved in war situations. So, so Hannah, her, her family was sort of involved in the Zimbabwean War for Independence. And then she grew up during apartheid South Africa. Mm. Pierre's origins are in the Congo. There's a Serbian, uh, two students from Serbia whose parents were involved with the, 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 the civil war there. So it's all these kind of, the, and it, that's where it's a kind of allegory for South Africa in a way, because it's, mm. it's about how we've absorbed this poison from the past and we think we're living in a kind of democracy where we can have normal relationships, but actually we've absorbed a lot of damage in a way and a lot of trauma without knowing it. And then we try to have normal relationships and sometimes these things get in the way. You know, so it's sort of looking at that. And because the, the novel is sort of, most of it's set in Paris in around 2003, just before the Iraq war, when there were all these protests in Paris. I was living in Paris at that time. Mm. And then you see the characters much later. There's kind of more space for the characters to kind of grow and reflect on who they were then and who they are now. Mm. Um, whereas when I did the play, it was just kind of present tense in that room. It was very intense. But now it's, yeah, it's, it's much more complex now. But, yeah. And it's unfortunate uh, how gullible we are into you know, allowing the demons of the past to come and haunt us in our present day lives. And I found a lot of fiction versus representation in this particular play. An example would be uh, how uh, Pierre negatively reacts to how he's portrayed in Hannah's play. Yes, yes, exactly. No, I mean, so the, the, play, the play begins with them about to watch the play. Then there's an interval in the middle where you suddenly get Pierre's point of view and his reaction to the play. He's been sitting there watching it with his wife. He hasn't told his wife anything about his time back in Paris with this slightly strange English teacher. Mm. Um, 
And the events described are quite accurate, literally accurate. And he's quite offended by the way he's been represented. And then in the second half of the play, where she takes more creative license, but kind of digs deep into who he really is, that in a funny way makes him feel seen. Yeah. So her, her fictions about him get closer to the truths about him than her so-called truths about him. Do you know what I'm saying? Sure. And it's, yeah, I mean, the thing's very much about fiction and, and how fiction, because it's a, a metaphorical space or an imagined space, yeah. it's a space where we can test out who we want to be or, you know, who we'd really like to become or possibilities for ourselves that our lives haven't necessarily given us. And you know there's I mean? elements of, of lies and deceit uh, in this yes. particular uh, play that uh, the main characters are entangled in. What is going through your mind when you develop this storyline? Um, I mean, I suppose tension is created often in stories through withholding information and then releasing it at the moment where you get the most dramatic stuff. So you'll find in most stories that there's kind of stuff that characters are withholding, they're kind of secrets, there's internal stuff that then kind of gets released. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm very much interested in the issue of truth and, um, and fiction in the, in the context of our country and the mm -hmm. TRC and the, the kind of legacy of the TRC and how we, we the past and how, you know, how accurately we can, we can capture the past and our yeah. versions of the past. You know, it's, it's okay. sort of dealing with, even though it's set in Paris and London, it's very much about us. But by putting it in Paris and London, and I mean, there are scenes that happen in Joburg and KZN. But by putting it there, it's getting us to reflect on our own issues in a different way, placing okay. them in a more kind of global context. You know what, Craig, I'll tell you what, this is an absolute masterpiece. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you. much for, so for much. sharing it with us. Eh? Thanks. We appreciate your time. Uh, that was uh, Craig Higginson. He's an acclaimed author and South African theatre director and playwright. He, he joined us uh, this morning to tell more about his latest book titled The White Room. Well, we invite all our worm, uh, worm, bookworm viewers, the lone readers out there and those belonging to certain book clubs, to send us their favourite picks. And by doing that, you can find yourself joining us live right here in studio for our Sunday book review feature to talk about the books that you are currently reading or have read all you see all you have to do is simply to email to facebook or tweet us a picture and that event captioned by using our social media platforms you can use our twitter handle at morning live SAPC or hashtag morning live SAPC. you can also tag us or send us a facebook message on our page that's morning live SAPC. you can send us an email at morning live at sapc.co.za this is morning live let's go for coffee we'll have more shortly after